forever. Dog. I don't know if this is worth talking about, mm-hmm. but you know, I always find it fascinating. Like, what is a Pixar? animated disney film and a disney animated film you know because they there is that separation Mm -hmm. and for a second i thought this would like when i saw the trailer for this i just assumed that it was pixar but then when i went into the movie i was like oh wait this isn't pixar this is just disney animated um and it's a musical i I would have thought it was pixar i like didn't even realize it wasn't (laughs) so what does pixar do now that what, Pixar movie this year was Luca, which uh, I don't know anybody who has seen. I watched. I watched Luca. I thought Luca was it was it oh, was really good. Jurassic. You you really they liked it. They didn't promote it. They just didn't. They didn't promote it. It was like beautiful. It was like a genuinely beautiful film, <laughs> but um, they just didn't promote it. it I got. It was Netflix though, right? It was a Netflix movie, but it was. No, it wasn't. What are you talking about? It's a Pixar. It was Pixar. James. No, okay, listen. What? I understand that the studios do this, that, and the other, but I felt like I saw it advertised on James, Netflix. You saw it advertised on Disney Plus, James. What? So is I saw it advertised right on Disney Plus. Of course, listen. It's this movie Disney came movie. and went for me. <laughs> okay, that's why. <laughs> okay, that's why <laughs> Disney's not releasing any film on Netflix. That's never going to happen. All right, okay. they have their own streaming service. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, you. You don't got to be so. <laughs> what? You host the movie podcast. You Man, I don't know, know what happened. I, <laughs> <laughs> I watch so many streaming services. I don't know which one's which. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I thought. You know, it was beautiful, man. It was it was a beautiful film. It deserves more respect. But yeah, yeah I I have only heard I've only heard that it that it was good. I've only heard good things about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just it was just a really solid movie. It was, it was hard, but you know the the other thing that I was going to say was that Disney, um, like you know, the Disney animated films of our day in which we grew up were musicals, right? So mm-hmm. you had these. Brought like, and of course there was hand drawn animation, but you know that discussion is a little old. Whatever, we're, we're in twenty twenty one. Just we have to get over it. Hand Bring it back. Animation. Bring it back. <laughs> wait, wait. You saying they shouldn't do animated? Me, I'm hand drawn stuff when they're doing um computer Look, animation. People, I'm just saying that. There are people who are like, you got to bring back the hand, like the because there mm-hmm. was this idea. What I'm trying to get at is there was this idea that Disney animated films fell off, right? And Pixar took over, and that was this. That was the kind of CGI mm, animation, right. but like. You know, Disney had Prince and the Frog, which we've reviewed, and you know, oh. we weren't the biggest fan. <laughs> so, um, and they've had. Then they went kind of a like they had like Tangled, which like yeah, that was fire. The kids love Tangled. Yeah, the, Tangled was a hit for the kids, which like <laughs> I don't have any personal feelings about Tangled, but I guess for the intended audience, the kids like Tangled. Yeah, I'm um, not a Tangled. <laughs> I guess I'm too old. I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's fun. But then you have like, you know, the um oh, I'm blanking on the name of it, the Fro- Frozen Frozen movies, right? It didn't feel like the same Disney animated musical where, you know, it didn't have the same it didn't have the same like kind of mystique. It didn't have the same like encanto, you know? Wow. We knew it was coming. <laughs> we knew you were going to try to do it. And I think that's why everyone automatically put their head down before you even God. Yeah, we gave about? you the you know space I mean? for that. We were like, it's coming. Yeah, because we just wanted to see how long it was going to take. We foresaw it. We were Bruno, and we were like, we know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> we all saw it happening. Uh, okay, I don't know what you're talking about, but I would like, I mean, do you guys agree? Like, do you feel like, <laughs> like the, you know, up until this movie, that, how you know, dare the, oh, you continue this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying it like, I just feel like the the newer Disney animated films don't have the same charm, you know? It's like, where's the Encanto, you know? <laughs> I'm logging off. How you know I... what I mean? Do you guys, like... <laughs> you guys keep going silent, like, now? nobody's answering my <laughs> question. It's weird. Can we start? Can we, like, start the show? Or do you want to keep saying Encanto? Oh, come on. <laughs> you know this cold open full of Encanto? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it means? <laughs> Oh, that's such a mess. Okay, right, let's I'm start the show. You know 
Jonathan Raylock, James the Third, Drop Milligan. What more can I say? You know what it is? Black men Welcome to Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood. Hollywood City. We don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we don't we talk, don't talk, talk Bruno. about Bruno. Bruno. No, no. Yo, that was fire. Put that was that my on, favorite song. Put that on my Spotify Same. immediately. Definitely as soon as I left the, the theater, <laughs> put it on my Spotify. I It was in my day. It was in my head all day today. I could not get it out of my head. I just kept in my head play, replaying that song. Oh, man. Um, Hey, everyone. For those of you uh, who are listening for the first time, this voice that you're hearing that sounds like it's full of magic and uh, mystique and I don't know, it just sounds really special. It's full of shit. That's what it sounds like. Is Jonathan Braylock <laughs> and the and the hater voice that you heard on top of the really nice voice? I introduce myself. Is... I introduce myself. <laughs> yeah, I can introduce myself. First off, first off, this is the voice of reason and honesty. All right, this is the voice of Gerard Milligan, and John's mm-hmm. voice is a hating ass voice. His damn self, he tries to code it in sugar. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I hope that can we leave that we, in? Yeah, so the, yeah. in the bio? <laughs> Honestly, there's two votes to leave that in. So, <laughs> okay. This voice, you know, I'm. This is James the Third. Hello. Okay. Hi. Great. Uh, <laughs> wow. uh, <laughs> speaking of voices, we have uh, an incredible special Excuse guest. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're excused. And this guest <laughs> gets the same benefit that all of our guests get with your drums. Please do not try to devalue. Wow. 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 I'm going to give drums because I respect our guest. That's not respectable. Uh, everyone, it's Elise Morales. Welcome wow. to, from our cartoon president. That's what I was trying to say. And Kanto to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do this with him. Don't do this. I love it. No. No conjugating needed. It's every every form of the the word. What does it even mean? Let me look it up. Good Lord. Wow. Uh, Definition. That's rude that you don't know. Um, Yeah. It means like you're in Kanto. Yeah. They live in the Encanto. Charm and glam and, and glamour. All right, got it. This is a podcast. <laughs> it's a film review podcast. <laughs> review the films of leading black actors. Talk about them in co- context of race and diversity in Hollywood. Also, actors of color. That's the film we we're doing today. We we're doing Encanto, a Disney animated film. It has a, it has um it has everybody. John Leguizamo has Stephanie. Yep. Beatrice. Wilmer Valmarana. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, William Valderrama. Oh, right. Yo, also. Diane Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. And the main character. <laughs> I said her name already. I said Stephanie. Oh, okay. Uh, who Rosa you, Diaz. Who you know from? Great voice work. <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine. Is that <laughs> Rosa right? mm-hmm. Diaz? Yeah, Rosa. Yeah. She's Rosa. I mean, her voice work was fantastic. Mm-hmm. She girl. was great. Mm-hmm. She was really, really good. Yeah, it was so crazy because I was like, I know she's in this, <laughs> but I kept being like, same. It, it, is it her? Like, I kept being like, mm-hmm. is it I thought that character? maybe she was strong sister. Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. And then, but then Same. now when I, when I listened to, when I listened to We Don't Talk About Bruno afterwards, I was like, oh, there yeah. she, and then, and then listen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love Strong <laughs> Sister's song. The one that was like, oh, drip, yeah. drip, drip. It right, was like, she right. had like a sexy song. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was she did the a animation. Dance in it. The animation for that was amazing. I loved that. Yeah, it was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, before we tip our hand too much, this movie currently has a ninety percent Rotten Tomatoes. It has a hundred seventeen million dollar uh, worldwide box office as of this day of this recording. Now let's finally just talk about our initial thoughts. And at least as our guest, you can totally kick us off if you'd like. <laughs> Okay, um, I really liked the movie. Well, you know, I went um, alone go. this afternoon, took a hit of the vape pen. There was like one other kid and his mom with me, and I went on a beautiful emotional journey with Mirabel oh. and the family. 
I loved it. I um I don't know if the I liked all the music, but I feel like other than we don't talk about Bruno, I don't know if the songs were like cuz I really Lynn's last uh like Disney musical Moana, I like got really into the music for Moana. And I'm not yes. sure if Encanto has me there, but I really enjoyed Encanto. Also, that yeah. main character looks exactly like oh. me. Hey. She does look like you. <laughs> so... She does look like you. Okay. I was like, okay. Up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, Cla- glasses. Cute glasses and everything. Hair. There you go. All right. And she didn't just have the glasses either. They kept having excuses for them to be like off or like her like trying to get. Like I was like, mm-hmm. they're using these glasses. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. glasses representation. Yeah. A bespectacled queen. <laughs> I agree. For me, this world was so fun. Like, this story of, like, a house that's enchanted and has, like, is, like, is a, has these blessings and gives all the kids, like, special powers. The kind of lore of that was super fun. I think the characters were so fun. I laughed so much. I think I laughed more in this film than I have. I don't remember the last time I laughed as much as I did in this movie. Like... It was so funny. I agree. Like the music, it, it, it's weird because it's like I liked, I dug all the songs and they did a good job of like incorporating story into the songs. But other than we don't talk about Bruno, n- I felt like none of the songs had like a, a catchy hook, which I think is one of those things where it's like it's hard for them to stick with you. Yeah. It was still, it was still, it was still fun. I am interested to know what you guys felt about like what the meaning of everything was. Cause I think I was a little fuzzy on that by the end, but outside of that, you know, a very enjoyable uh, movie for me. Like I said, I didn't like this movie. I loved it. I loved it. It was awesome. <laughs> of course you did. It was so good. <laughs> of course you did. James. Had a great of course time. you did. I also saw it today in a, basically unattended you know, it's a Monday mm-hmm. afternoon. So there it was me, my wife, and then the back row, <laughs> it was so funny. The back row was like four people on there's like an aisle in the middle and there were just four people both on the uh, two people on each side of the aisle and that was it. There were six <laughs> of us in the in the in the movie and like this isn't about the movie. But when, when they waited and watched all the credits and, but they turned all the lights on so they were just a row of people sitting inside. They weren't talking to each other. They were just staring at the words going up and I thought that was really bizarre. Um anyway, the movie Fantastic. Really fantastic. <laughs> I uh, agree that I was like, I, I feel like a criticism that that Lynn specifically has gotten. Maybe we talked about this on um, Heights in the Heights, but of like, oh, are you did you leave singing the songs or like were they were they were they hooky? And I so I was like waiting for one. And when we don't talk about Bruno started, I was like, here it is. I was mm-hmm. like, this is my shit. Like, <laughs> I know I'm going to leave wanting to sing this song. And I feel like you need one. You need at least that one for a lot of the. You know, like Frozen. You're like, let it go, but nobody's like, I don't know any other song. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we we're mm-hmm. not like mm-hmm. we don't. I mean, some of them, you know, leave with their like several like songs that you're like, oh, I I love those. Those are all bangers. But like, y- all you need is that one. And I think that we don't talk about Bruno. Definitely gives us that. I found the cat was crying by the end of it um it was great to hear him uh back uh and you know back he hasn't been gone but hearing him in a in a role was a lot of fun and yeah i don't know what else to if there's anything else i wanted to say oh i'm also interested in what in what people think of the ending because afterwards i was like oh, i don't know if i like oh no and then and then i talked myself i talked myself into you know like in enjoying what the what i feel like the message was so that, that was where I ended it. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Listen, man, many people think therapy is for quote-unquote crazy people, but therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. I, mean, I, I go to therapy. I just, I just like help sometimes. It means you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them, not avoid them. You know, and we've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life. I don't know if you've grown up at home like like I kind of did where it feels like, oh, if somebody's seeing a therapist, you know, there's something wrong with them. But actually, Mm -hmm. that thinking is wrong. Mm -hmm. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor with nutrition. So we should be focusing our minds just as much. Listen. 
my therapist is through better health i personally use this and like i talk to chloe like literally every week and the beauty of it is is that if there's something i want to remember for a session i can just go on my phone do a quick like text in the app she'll get it we have clock it and we can make sure we talk about it next time we have a session so it's fire BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Black Men Can't Jump listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash jump. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash jump. You know what? Go jump on that better help. Yeah, man. I like this movie. I ain't like these songs, though. I'm not trying to be a Disney <laughs> on, musical snob, <laughs> but um, even right now, before this, I have my Disney sing along. But also, I will say, I was a kid who had Disney sing-along VHS tapes. Like, that was my yes. jam. Yeah, I ain't like none of the songs. Like, none of them. But, <laughs> you know, I think Bruno was cool. <laughs> um, the thing is, you know what it was? This was one of the first times watching a Disney musical where I was like, I really liked the main story a lot. Like, um, I saw it last night in New York at like 8.20. And when I went to see it, it was pretty packed and it was adults. It was like, I was on a row with like four dudes and at one point towards the end, I know I was sniffling and these two non-mass assholes who I moved away from because they ain't had no mass on. Um, one of them definitely was sniffling, but I couldn't tell if he had the Rona or not. So I moved, but I think he might have <laughs> yeah, been was the sniffling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it was all around the same time. But I really did like the story. And I, I think what Bray's hinting at, I think once we get to the end and start dealing with... Um, the grandmother, I think the story switches a little bit or the meaning of what's happening, which I understand, but I really liked, I guess I really related to the original yeah. story about like finding your place, almost feeling like, you know, you're not special like everybody else. Even like the little kid you love is kind of passing you by. Like, I think I relate to that a lot. Whereas once it got to like that, how do I say, I want to say Abuela. it right. Is uh, Abuela? Mm -hmm. Abuela. Oh shit, Abuela. Yeah. Okay. Like once it got to her, I totally understood why we were making that choice, but it felt like that choice took away from I don't know. I, I guess we get yeah. to it, but I really did enjoy the story. Music, not so much, but story, yes. <laughs> Music, not so much though. But story. We yes. hear you. Lynn, My I God. Love you. Yeah. Lynn, <laughs> you, you, Lynn, you have made Lynn, this point. very clear. Lynn, Lynn, if you watch this. I think is I if think you I think this? you're great. Sorry, listen. Whatever <laughs> you was messing up too, saying listen. We got it. Don't do this. <laughs> but no, I don't want Lena to think I don't like him. Yeah, he'll Please just hear your sense. review and in, in the Heights and and this film, and he'll think you love him. Oh, I liked In the Heights. <laughs> Wait, did you remember? Like I liked In the Heights. Yeah, man. Oh, okay, I liked In the Heights. Even though this movie did better at um having different shades of brown than In the Heights and um the trailer for uh, West Side Story did. Not gonna say it, but they did in animation. <laughs> love the color spectrum. So. I love my favorite Jiraism is him saying, not gonna say something he's already said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I love yeah. the spectrum. <laughs> All right. Well, so yes, this film starts off. Wait, before the story, do we have oh no, I know what it is. Cause it starts it, it, it's weird. It's like we get her as a little kid. Yes. And they tell like half that story. They kind of like the grandma's kind of like talking about how this the house is special. It's going to give her this special gift and, and she's special, you know, and she's like really talking her up for this whole ceremony. And we kind of like, you know, we walk and she like goes over to the doorknob and she like touches the doorknob and then it kind of it fades into the present day and and uh, we see her as an adult or as I guess a teen I don't even know how old she was supposed to be actually <laughs> I have no clue how old she is I have no idea yeah. but you know what she's young adult young adult you know young adult yeah yeah because they I mean it's it, it's fun because they were all like in the same family and of course you know we get this like and, and we know it's kind of established that the her little cousin 
it's his special day and he's going to get his gift. And then in the process of that, we kind of see the town and we see the little kids. Uh, and then we have our first song where she's singing about the whole family and what all the gifts are. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. What's your gift? This song was great. And the mm-hmm. turn when they when <laughs> when they <laughs> try to ask her her gift. And she just starts singing about everybody else faster. (laughs) 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 Killed me. I was I was gutturally laughing out loud in the theater of six people. It was great. And I did love everyone's like everyone's power. I I loved like the cast of characters. I felt like was so good uh, in this one. And you get it like right out of the gate when she sings the song, introducing the cast of characters. The only one I wasn't too. The only gift I wasn't too fond of is cousin. Uh, the hearing she? one. The cu- yeah, the hearing one. Yeah, I was like, this is cool. But everybody else got all this dope. Like the one dude can shape shit. Like one can make flowers and plants and stuff. And she can just hear a pin drop. I'm yeah, like, yeah, but, but it turned out to be good. really useful. And I liked, I liked her character. Like I thought she was funny. Same. The way that they did her characterization. The character was really funny. There was one moment where they were like, they had to like, they were like using everyone's power. And then (laughs) Abuela like like, asked her, asked her like, uh, yeah, like, what is this person thinking? And she's like, he's thinking this. And and I'm like, wait, (laughs) he was was physically saying exactly the information you wanted at that exact moment like that. I, that, that really stretches. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, it was fun. It was fun, especially that moment where she was like, I know. <laughs> it's like, dude, we're the only two who know. Yeah, that, that's her big, <laughs> big shining moment. <laughs> yes. Also, the, how they shot that sequence, or oh, not shot, but how they rendered that sequence of just like, every time someone would pass by her face, you could see the telephone of the info going mm-hmm. down. <laughs> just... Oh, I love um, that. Oh my, that scene that was sorry. That's so much later. It is. It is much later. That scene was so funny. Bruno's vision. <laughs> it's <was> cool <laughs> to see everyone's power. And to me, this was the main. I agree with you, Jarrah. Mm-hmm. Like that. This was the main theme. That was like a great Disney. Also, a great Disney theme that didn't include like parents who were dead and. We talk about this so much for whatever reason, like so many Disney animated films, I guess animated films in general, like the characters are like orphans or like have one parent dead or like it was so nice to see like oh, the whole family was still alive. They, 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 they granddad got murked. Yeah. They granddad got murked by the yeah. um, MS. Abuelo got, he got taken well, down. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the border patrol. He got the MS. The thing is, I even like when they did the flashback. I was like, y'all, y'all didn't have to show the machete. Like, we didn't need to know how he got, got. I was like, God dang. No, they did. They did. Sometimes, but sometimes it's like, sometimes you see a thrust or like you see a, a this or a that. Like, all they did for this was pull out the machete. And we because my know thing is, what happened. That's because it's, because it's normally fantastical. It's like, you know, like uh, Little Mermaid, we know what happens to the mom. Like, sometimes... This is like real shit that people have to deal with. And it's like, literally, they're being chased by the MS-13 and they pull out a goddamn machete. And I'm like, this is... Well, it didn't even run at one point. I'm like, baby, you got to get out of there. Like, I, I feel... Go, get out of here. Her man was under attack. Yeah. MS-13? Is that what it was supposed to be? It was supposed to be a gang? I mean, those are the people I know who usually have the gang that normally is known for carrying around a machete. Could be another one. But I mean, that's the, the one I'm familiar with. But they were on horses. I feel like they were like old school, like revolutionary army. I thought it was like con- people. Yeah, like I don't. I think it's from like the the past, but I think it was meant to be deliberately reminiscent of like image wise. I think they it was supposed like- to be deliberately reminiscent of like I think like the border and stuff like that too. Right. Oh, uh, because I think they had on t shirts and khakis. I think. Wait, what? They Wait had like they were in t-shirts they had like, and khakis. <laughs> Drow, no. what are you they watching? They had t-shirts and cargo shorts. They had like they were. Did I make that up? They were wearing. They were riding horses and had like torches. <laughs> you are fully making up. T-shirts no, but I'm and saying but, that's insane. But then y'all see the outline. I'm pretty sure when they brought the machete, he didn't have on khakis. I think they had like the hats and stuff. Really, I thought he had on khakis and a t-shirt. I honestly thought they were Spanish conquistadors. Like Drow. I thought they were like. <laughs> 
What? I thought Yo. they were just like European, uh, you know, colonizers. That's who I thought Yo. they were. I, I, man, I don't know what I saw. I could have sworn when we had that last shot at the end and he got real close with the machete, I could have sworn he had on khakis and like a, like a, a shirt, like a, I didn't, man, I don't know. That's on me. I put, I put my own spin on this movie. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad. <laughs> For real? They had on cor- Wow, had damn. On God, I, I made that. I don't know. I don't know, man. I thought they had on cargo I mean, pants. I thought they they, they just clearly didn't live <laughs> in the world of the present at all. Like I thought it I thought it was I thought they were like, yo, these are the gangs coming after everybody. I I think I put my own spin on it, man. That's on me. <laughs> wow. All right. Um okay. Uh <laughs> Well, anyway, uh <laughs> but yeah, we get we get all this Abuela didn't have a gift, right? She no. didn't like she started it all, but she didn't have a power. No. Oh yeah, I guess not. I thought by the end of the movie we were gonna like find out what her power was, and then yeah. I, and then that never happened. Yeah. Anyway, we we get to the we get to the point where we realize she doesn't have a gift, so she's gonna feel some type of way about this kind of thing. And she's been living in the nursery. She actually doesn't get her own room That's because when up. everyone gets a gift, they get their own room, and it's like the room the house, you know, like makes a room that's you know <laughs> around their gift, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, wild. So she's just living in a like a tiny nursery with the with little baby cousin. <laughs> Who gets a room? <laughs> Who then gets a jungle room? <laughs> oh my god! I appreciated the Doctor Who reference. They screamed, "It's bigger on the inside!" When they go inside the door, I appreciated it. That's a Doctor Who it thing. Is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will say the thing I liked about this movie is that I do really feel like I don't know as a, as a as a human who's getting older. And I'm looking at people under me, like, get on real quick. I was like, damn, it do be feeling like you ain't get the gifts. So I'm just watching, like, everybody around me with all the gifts. And I'm just out here like, all right, cool. Let me just keep cheering niggas on real uh, For whatever quick. reason, that hurt. That hit. You saying, you calling making it in the industry getting the gift, that really, <laughs> <laughs> like, that hit me in a way no, that I was not expecting right now. <laughs> that literally the moment, the moment, because I didn't realize, like, the little boy was getting it. But when she went under the bed, and was like get like encouraging him, even though she knew at that moment he was about to get something that she never, or at least at that point, could get or probably wasn't gonna get. I was like, man, this just feels too real. Like, yeah. this, like this moment feels too real. Then she had to walk him, ha- like hold his hand. <sighs> she was like, I know you're gonna get it, and it's gonna be the best day of your life. I <laughs> that but, was heart wrenching. Honestly, I do think. There was a small part of her that wanted him to not get it. So she didn't feel bad. 100%. I think that that's true. But that's real. And so, so when, because when he got it, she was like, damn, this kind of hurts a little more. Something's yeah. wrong with me. Yeah. It's not the power going away. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. Every new person who gets it is another chance for it to just be her alone again, mm-hmm. not getting mm-hmm. it. And it sucks because they showed her even before that scene, just trying her best to like help and like be like, you know, useful. And the fact that like she kept getting in the yeah. way and then, you know, the grandmother being like, yo, just let everyone else do what they do. And I was like, God. Abuela was fucked up. I'm saying. She was so rude. I was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe this will foreshadow what I think the movie was about, but I think a lot of it was about like the Latinx like family structure. And I do think Abuela being kind of fucked up actually is a good (laughs) part of that because I think that's true of a lot of families of being like, oh, Abuela has PTSD and it makes her kind of messed up. So (laughs) that's so real, man. That's true. Yeah. That's so real. Yeah. And it is so interesting because even the mom, even. Uh, what's the main character's name? Uh, Mirabelle. Uh, Mirabelle. Yeah, Mirabelle. Mirabelle. Even her mom, who you knew was kind of caring, kind of really. I saw that at one time of like, you always be mean to her. Didn't really defend her too much, and it's just one of those things where it just felt like she was by herself. But it is something to her to like, even be by yourself, but still be wanting to help your family because like, this is my family. Even though they treat me like shit, my sister's not nice to me. My mom, low key, don't be on my side. My grandmother does not like me. Uh, <laughs> But I think it was nice that they had the the parents were really were really trying to be on her side. And we had 
a couple instances where her mom defended her in front of her mother, mm-hmm. which was nice. Like I liked, I liked mm-hmm. that we got to see that. Like it's it's interesting because it's a very nuanced thing, but I feel like it's not necessarily the case. Like usually it's like when you have a character that's like feels like an outsider, like everyone sees them as an outsider except for maybe one other person. Mm-hmm. Um, but like she and like she didn't like her sister. Her sister is mis- a perfect and her power is flowers, which is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> like just she can create beautiful bouquets uh, out of thin air. Yeah. And then her like souped up power is that she can now make cactuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything. She can make all the she made vines at one point. She can like turn it up a notch. She poison ivy. But she could always do vines. Yeah, she could always do vines, but like pretty vines. And now she could make like weird colored anyway, like things that don't have to look pretty. Yeah, now she can make a vine that'll like yeah. punch you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was basically all like all like desert plants. <laughs> anyway. Uh but mm-hmm. that was it was a nice thing to see like the i don't know the complexities of it and then her mom was like trying to make her feel better by saying like hey like you don't need a power to be special like you're still special and she's like yeah you're saying to the this to me while you heal me with yeah. food like <laughs> yeah. like yeah. get out of here <laughs> i have yeah. a question because i thought maybe i missed something why was her dad always being stung He's by just bees? allergic to bees it was just like a but what was there like <laughs> Like, what was he doing that was causing him to be stung so often? So he gets stung twice, right? There's two times. The first yeah. time, yes. he's, like, working on something next to a next to the bee's nest. And it's, dur- it's during the uh, the Encanto song. And he, mm. we talk about the family, and he, he trips. And then the, all of the bees, like, ascend upon, <laughs> uh, upon him. And then okay, so I guess it's just that this is happening yeah, to him often. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. this kind yeah. of it's thing. It's like a fun okay. little characteristic. <laughs> I was like, did I miss something where he has a thing with bees? <laughs> yeah, his power. His no. power is no. wielding bees, and he's also <laughs> all of the. <laughs> is that he gets his power? Is that he gets <laughs> right. stung by bees? All the time. <laughs> All of the uh, spouses don't have powers, and and most of the spouses are men, which is which is fun. It's like we have the little kid who's a dude without a power, and then we have the Bruno. But then there's a lot of women. It was just like yeah, you know, which was, then there's a one boy who does yeah. um, shape shifting. Uh, oh right, and the boy who does shape shifting that was great. Um, yeah, he was great. Oh yeah, that was so fun. That was just such a fun I mean, like. <laughs> I don't know, like, they they set up all these nice little jokes, and, like, there were so many... Like, even the the townsperson who was like, oh, yeah, she doesn't have a gift. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, she, you know, so here's your thing. It's it's, it's called the not special special, because you don't have a gift. Because yeah, you're not special. Like anyway. And then the little girl... <laughs> then the little girl being like, if I was you, I'd be really... I wish he's like sad, and he's like, "Oh, maybe you're- I would be sad. really sad." Yeah, I'd be really sad. I laughed sad. so hard when she said it was so funny. It's like they just fully <laughs> underlined how she was feeling. Maybe your gift is being in denial. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a great joke. I was, I was like, "That's so rude." That's so- <laughs> maybe your gift. Anyway, and then this little cousin, he has one of the coolest gifts. He can talk to animals. The animals like him. Like they just come out. He's just like talking, like talking to a jaguar. Like, yeah. I mean, like that was amazing. It's not that he just talks to animals. It's that they want to talk to him. Like, they yeah, want, he's like a like beast he master. Is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He rules over all creatures now. <laughs> like, I was scared, man. If he didn't get his powers, I'm like, I can't look at this little cute little. I need you. I was like, I can't get his little boy powers. And it sucked because when they did flashbacks of her, I was like, y'all gonna really treat this cute little girl like this like no one consoled her like the grandma just like held the candle and walked away i was like oh when she touched the doorknob it turned to dust uh, <laughs> stop it yeah. like, the, like the door stop. turned to dust bro the, the, they didn't even have to do it like that they didn't even have to the <laughs> whatever the candle does <laughs> You ain't have to manifest a whole ass door. It was like, nah, you're you're you don't get a room. This door was gonna lead to your room, and now this door is turning to dust, and this is the party is over. 
<laughs> See, but the thing about it made it so sad is that they kept showing her turn around and look to her grandma, and the grandma just was like, uh. It's just, it was just a, at one point, I think they even had her do the the, the breath of like, uh. <laughs> and I know it's supposed to be fear mm-hmm. of the magic leaving, but the fact that there's a little kid looking at you, I was like, duh. Let's definitely, let's talk about this magic leaving because it, it is a little hard to track for me. So... Bray, don't do this. No, I just want no, to see if we... Let's, I don't, let's I just try to see if we can break it down. I don't know if we can figure it out. Yeah, because... Let's because, not do okay, this. The first time we, the audience sees it is when she gets... She's sad. You know, she leaves the party and she's over there. And then all of a sudden, like a piece of the, you know, tiles falls and she cuts her hand because she's like looking at it. And then she looks up and like everything's cracking. And it's cracking all the way up to the candle. And she's freaking out. And she sees the candle kind of like, you know, and she goes in, she says, hey, the, the house is almost is cracking. It's going to, you know, where it's a, please, we got to go. We got to save the <laughs> casita, you know, and then they run out mm-hmm. and nothing's there. And so they're all like. Oh, you're making this up. You know, you just wanted attention because you don't feel special. Um, even though she still, she does have the cut on her hand. And then eventually we find out that from her older sister, who's strong, I forget what her name is. Louisa. Uh, Louisa, that there have been cracks before, or she felt her power drain at the same moment that she saw the cracks. Right. And she was like, I like I think this is like Abuela's been worried about this for some time. Jumping ahead, when we get to Bruno, we see that he's been patching up cracks, you know, this whole time himself, meaning it's been happening for a while. So like is the idea that it really is her that's causing the cracks or is it the grandma or is it yeah. My theory is that the candle was given to the grandmother in her time of need to bring happiness to like her and the town's people. And so to me, it's like when she became so strict to me, I didn't really get it until we got to her sister and we realized her sister wasn't happy, even though everyone thought she was perfect. So it's like to me, it's like everyone lived in fear low key. So like the house wasn't happy and the candle wasn't happy and the family wasn't happy. So like until the family all became like. I don't know. Not I don't want to say like they had to be joyous and happy, but until they all fully connected for the same goal, like the camera didn't come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And I thought that the cracks were like representative of like missed uh, opportunities mm-hmm. by the family to like be together, like do yeah. the right thing. Like they just like they harm Mirabelle so much. Like she watches this whole thing that's so sad for her. And then like everyone has a party and they kind of like leave her. And isn't it right after she sings her like I want song mm-hmm. that she sees the cracks. So it's like the family has like hurt her feelings very badly. And then we start to see like these big visible cracks. It's the cracks in the facade, you know? It goes back to that thing of like, it feels like the magic also, right? It, it's it's sort of this sort of this thing of like you know the magic is here for this reason that they explain which is like the magic is there for you to protect your your family and the and the generations that follow, but it's not about protecting the magic it's about protecting the people and that's that's why it's like we're gonna show the door and we're gonna take away the door with this person like do you still care about this person no you've been ignore you've been ignoring her for for years and years and years, you know so. Like the the cracks have sort of all been building up because of the way specifically Abuela has been treating um, Mirabelle. But like, but the way that everyone has sort of been looking at it is like, oh, let's uplift the magic instead of uplifting the the family. Right. But why does it take whatever amount of years from when she was a kid to this point? You know what I mean? Like, why yeah. didn't we see that? That's my that's only good question. That's my that's only question, question is like, what? What put and then the other question I have why is why now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the why now is the that's the bit and then the other question I have is why didn't she get a gift? Cause we never really find out. I think on purpose. I think for this reason. I think be, be, and 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 I only think this after the fact because they give it back once they reunite. But like you know, she doesn't get a gift because like literally like this is a test. Are you worthy of this magic? You know, we're not going to give it to somebody, you know, because because my theory is and this makes this probably won't make sense. But I think it's a cute thing. My theory is that she 
Her gift is she is the actual manifestation of the fire. She is the reason the family have gifts. She is the connecting tissue. She is the one that keeps them happy. She's the one that keeps them going. She's the one who like is the person in the town. And matter of fact, the fact that she had to open the door to bring the magic back, it shows that she's the most powerful one of them all, you know? See, the only my only question about that, though, is that, one, they all had gifts before her, and there was a lot of people before her. And then also, if it's what you're saying, James, how come she, if it's just for the test, then how come she doesn't get a gift in the end? When but she's the fire, right? She the fire. Right. Because I think the point I this was the thing afterwards where I was like, man, why doesn't she it's weird that they give it back and she doesn't still get one. But I think at the end it's still it's 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 to try to balance both things, which is like you still need to accept that family is family no matter what and the and the and the importance of that. And like and so, you know, and so that and it goes both ways for both of them, you know. She's the gift. <laughs> She is the gift. It's for the, she's the chosen one. She just is. Bruno saw her in the vision. Some people is the chosen one. It took, you know, the family growing to this, because we're now at, you know, generation four now. You know, we're now. It's just two, actually, because that's still her cousin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're like. We've built the family to the to this point and like and now, you know, and now we're testing it. I didn't need like, OK, it's been around for a bit. And now and now we're offering this this test of whether or not you keep it. Yeah, I felt like the why now was like because it was her little cousin ceremony and it's the first one since this thing happened to her. So it's like, you know the family's next shot to like get it right. And they don't. And it just like the the bad stuff keeps happening. It keeps getting worse. No, you just, you're trying to ruin this beautiful movie, Braylock. No, he's just trying to understand it. Just trying to get to the bottom of it. I'm not trying to ruin it. I'm trying to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so the middle of it is after we see all these cracks, she wants to help the family. She's like, it's not me. Something's wrong with the house. You know, grandma is for whatever reason, hiding it. And I'll try to figure out what it is so that I can fix it. And then I can save the, this house and save the family, you know, and everyone will love me. Which is real. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It's like, it's so real. Ahead, she's stop. like, it's very funny. She's like, a I'm doing it for the family and a little bit for me. <laughs> so she sets off on this journey and we, and we mm -hmm. find out that Bruno had a vision of her. And that's when we get to, that's when we get the song. We don't talk about Bruno because she's like, well, what, what's the deal with Bruno? And through that song, we learn that every, or seemingly every prophecy that he foretold because he could see in the future was a bad prophecy and then once he said it then it would come this true. Will be so the deep. only good one Go was uh was isabella <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i mean but, but see but even that though like to me this this movie this that was hilarious. that little bit talks about like what i like to call what i think what people call now like the toxic positivity where like all he is saying is like what actually is going to happen like even isabella being perfect we come to realize that she is miserable you know what I'm saying? We come to realize like that whole facade, she is like, the whole reason she does the spikes because it's new, mm -hmm. she gets to break out. And to me, it's so deep because like that dude was shunned for being honest and like even trying to be nice because they even called him like the family weirdo multiple times <laughs> in there. The family weirdo. And then this weirdo cares so much about his family. Mm -hmm. He never left. He was hiding behind the walls and patching up the broken house. I'm like, and then even they had that conversation after the house breaks down. He comes out with the horse and is like, I told her to do it. It was my, he still was trying to save the day. And I'm like, something about that character, like. That was the sweetest moment. I don't know, man. And it's, it's really cool that it was John Leguizamo yeah. because to me, it's like John Leguizamo since I was a kid has always been pulling for like Latinx shit. It was like, it's like when In Living Color was on, he had his fucking sketch show right mm -hmm. after that and he had an all Latin cast on that junk. Like, he'd he be doing Broadway shows. Everything he talks about is like, and to see him get to be in a movie like that, it sucks because I can't remember the last time he was in one like this just because he rides so hard. He was riding before that shit was popular. You know what I'm saying? He was around like, fighting those fights when no one were like, giving a shit. Yeah. Using his fucking mm -hmm. last name. You know what I'm saying? Love that dude. Sorry. Just love John Leguizamo, man. That dude is when mm -hmm. he, when they show that he's painted a, he doesn't even uh, have a plate. He's painted a plate 
onto the wooden oh. table. I was like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> oh. It was too much. No. I couldn't take it. He's right there. He's peering through a crack in the wall, having dinner with everybody. Been doing that for a, t- two decades, however long it's been since Talking he left. Talking to rats. It's crazy. Talking to rats. Oh, and all his like, knock, knock. All, all of his little... Ugh. John Linguizamo has never walked into a voiceover booth not like ready to do something. <laughs> Yo, man, he is like... That dude just... And he feels so... I mean, I know this movie is in New York, but like everything about him feels like fucking New York and like about it and just real and just fucking love that dude, man. Yeah, um, him and the rats were hilarious. The rats were all up on the toothbrushes. <laughs> yeah, they were licking his toothbrush. <laughs> he was like, hmm. <laughs> um, oh, his design was cool, too. I oh, love yeah, his design. Where, where he lived, it was like a cavernous, like this all these stairs and then like all this sand it was insane oh when she walks up the stairs that's very funny and also when the bird is like in there and she's like oh you well at least i'll have a friend nope you flew yeah. away immediately yep and then when yep. the bird leaves <laughs> it's like all creepy and the bird's like bah! when the sand comes <laughs> but also there's something about this movie too is like you know when we finally find out that uh, he saw the her. vision her and the vision and like told the grandmother and like the reason he left was because he didn't want anyone else to know. It's like it, there is something about sometimes these family secrets that people hide that they think are trying to protect people. But that's real. Just really, really makes it worse. And it's and that shit is generational. Like literally yeah. you're thinking about like that was the son which affected a grandkid, which then affected the whole family because of one simple thing. And it's just like. I don't know. I feel like that happens a lot with families. Um, yeah, I thought that that's a lot of like what this movie was. Like, I felt like so many of the roles were like, I don't know, an allegory for like Latinx families or like immigrant families. Like, I feel like so many immigrant families are bit like they're where they are because they had to like lose their father in some way, whether it be because he like actually died or had to leave to work or was just distant mm. because he was always working like extremely hard hours. And mm-hmm. then like a lot of these families have like really, really strong matrilineal things going on after. And I felt like Mirabelle's two sisters, like the way, like, like I felt like Bruno, you know, I think there is usually a weird uncle who like makes people want to think about parts of the family they don't want to think about. And also Mirabelle's two sisters, I feel like are a lot of like immigrant daughters have to be either like superhumanly strong or just perfect all the time to like get by. And so I felt like all of these people were really representing like the way that a family survives after like losing their home and going somewhere. Cause that's the grandma's whole thing is like, she doesn't want to lose her home ever again. And that's so important to like, just, I thought about it. Like um, people migrate into America and even like black people who technically, you know, we didn't migrate, I guess it was more like forced. But um, just how the grandmother was so put on the rest of her family, they had to be perfect. Like whether or not they were happy about it, they had to be perfect because they had to be perfect for the outside world. Outside that house for the town, this is the family with the gifts who does all this. Like the perfect daughter has to be perfect. Gotta marry that dude. Like the, the one who um, can live shit has to lift everything for the entire town and, like, cannot have a break. And I feel like sometimes, you know, as people of color, there is this pressure to be perfect. Like, I, I was watching people talk about the the show Harlem that came out in December, and the conversation right now is, you know, with Tracy Oliver, is like, yo, why can't this show be? Why does this show has to be representative of every black person like every black experience you know what i mean i've heard lemon well talk about that too many times it's like i'm making stuff for the world i know you know it doesn't mean like this is every latinx experience but like because we have so few it's like we got to incorporate everybody you know we got to do we got to you know we got to be for the person in the suburbs the person who just got here the person who's like in the hood it just feels like so tiring and i was like oh yeah related it was so good Oh, man. She was a diamond in the rough, you know what I mean? Once she kind of discovers, like, you know, all the trails leads to Bruno and realizes she's, he's living in the house and 
basically convinces him to do the vision again, even though he had kind of sworn off ever looking into the future again. And, you know, they see this vision, they realize like, you know, it has like two sides to it. Either she's going to stand in front of the house and it's broken or she's standing in front of the house and it's re and it's reunited. It like it hinges on her. And as they're looking at it, they're like, I don't know. It like it looks like it's gonna go the bad way. And then she sees like a butterfly flying, and then they see like her hugging somebody. They're like, Oh, when you hug someone, the candle will burn brighter. So you just have to like hug this person. Um, and that makes sense to like your the further point where I I mean, this was how I always thought about the cracks was like it was cracks in the family, right? And so like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. her the thing that didn't quite connect to me is that it seems like it's like when she did it with her sister, her the oldest, the strong sister, like she hugged her, but then but then there were cracks like right after that happened. But maybe that was because the grandma came and found out immediately. And maybe like the timing of that was just they played with it. So it, it seems like it was because of what she did but it was actually because the grandma found out and was like even more mad at her and the strong sister yeah and also like for me it was sort of like because there's already a wrench between that relationship like that relationship is is already steeped in like and in, in jealousy on one hand and then on the other hand i get i, I guess on both right it's jealous it's jealousy on both sides like you get to do whatever you yeah. want and i have to be perfect and like you're so perfect, when they I, made up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It did make the house a little better Then uh, well, it was mad again. And then so and then like the final cracks kind of happen and the whole house breaks down. And at that point, the grandma's like, this is all your fault. But she actually stands up for herself in this moment. He's like, yeah. no, grandma, this is your you're the yeah. reason. Yeah. But because now the two of them really don't like each other, it's like all it's all done. And then she runs away. Uh, crying. Going back oh, one brief amount, I did not like Flower Sister's song. I think Flower Sister's I song was the only one where I was like, this one's not good. Neither did I. I went I went to the restroom at that point and came back to that song and I was like, I don't think I didn't I like, like it. I don't like that she's <laughs> like got all the weird like punky powder in her hair at the end and now her <laughs> outfit's black. I don't know. It was cool. I liked that they I liked what the what the song was about. Like I liked what was happening in the song, but I was like, I don't think I like it. It was one of the first Disney movies I felt like the songs didn't from person to person, the the style of songs didn't change. Like um they all like I knew at one point somebody was gonna start singing really, really fast. And it happened in every single song. But you, I, I mean that by like, you know, like um, you know, somebody may have the ballad, somebody had like the like the the bad guy usually has the quick song and that's like, you know, whatever the contemporary music of the time is. Like, is it rap? Is it reggaeton? Is it like, so, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. Lynn was yeah. like doing all of his tricks, I felt like. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I felt like Lynn was doing all of his tricks. But I, I agree with that. Like, I had forgotten that see. it was that it was him. And maybe it's obvious, I guess. Maybe it's, you know, I, I should have been like, oh, yeah, of course it's Lynn. He just did blah, blah, blah or whatever. But there was like a point in, early in the in the movie where I was like, oh, who did the music? And then I just heard like a refrain. And I was like, that's it's Lynn. It's Lynn. <laughs> like, it was just, like, you could just like tell it was him. And there was a thing that happened. I was talking about how, you know, oh, am I going to leave singing a, a song? And I and I. And and yes, we don't talk about Bruno was at the top of my mind, but I also left being like, we are powerless. We are powerless from from I I, like, that. like that has also been in my head as which one was it's that the one? Uh, oh, God. When does that happen? When does we are when they sing we are powerless, we are powerless. I think it's in the second act of it. But anyway, it was just a, it was, uh, uh, it, one of the songs. It's after the blackout. <laughs> it's after the blackout in, in the I'm like I don't even remember I don't the song. remember that at all dude but I was singing that song I mean I'm saying I was singing a different song a song from In the Heights not a song from this oh, from I this was like, movie <laughs> because because of yeah because you're hearing the the um you know just because he was sort of doing all of his he was doing his thing it was very much like Lynn Manuel here's my my thing about the music this is the last thing I'll say about the music uh, none of it I didn't dislike any of it, but almost none of it stuck with me. 
you know what I mean? Like it was all like, like serviceable and fun in the moment. But like, I couldn't tell you outside of, we don't talk about Bruno, you know, what any of those songs they were. They need a Magic Man G. <laughs> you know what it is? Um, it's the bad yeah. guy song is always good. And I know this movie doesn't have a bad guy, but technically we thought it was Bruno. That's the other thing. This movie doesn't have a bad guy. Which, which, I, don't, really. which I don't mind. I like that it's a family drama, but it's like, you know, even I saw Spongebob um, on Broadway and when Plankton came out, Plankton had a dope little... Oh, it was so like, good. It was, it, was, it was great. But also, I, but you know what it is? You know what it is? I think Plankton, and I'm thinking about Magic Man G, they all have this like hip hop kind of vibe to it, which that's not what you get in this. song because they had different artists Whoa. do everybody's wow. like music for that. And I remember that uh, Ti Ti did yeah. that. That was great. <laughs> wow. The end of this movie is Abuela is finds her in the forest and is like basically like you're right. It was all me. She tells her exactly what happened, which. I was confused as to. I feel like she they are she already told this story, but like was it just more was it just that there were more details? Yeah, yeah. And then we saw him get murked at the end this time, right? But it's like I guess like I thought they always knew that story, so I didn't know like there was a part of it that like she felt like it was like I'm gonna tell you something you didn't know, but then I was like, oh, didn't we know this? Like no break. And she was like she was like you know I didn't think it, it started off with something like um I didn't think it was always gonna be like this. It started and she literally goes it started out I think it was supposed to show her transition to like how she was like fun loving and like different, but then after the death it she put on literally she. Um, once they finally get the house, um, she puts the babies down and puts on black immediately and then walks outside. So it's like, I think it's supposed to show like who she transitioned from. I think the bit. reason it was hard for me to track this was that when we start out with this movie, everybody's, seen, everybody's having fun. Like there's clearly the house has fun. And so this house has been having fun for quite some time. Okay. Um, before and everybody had a power and now we get this thing of like oh everyone like or at least two of the sisters feel the pressure of the powers that they have and like we know now bruno as well like had this power that was like not supposed to help the family but like outside of that like i guess i was i guess i was confused about like what exactly was the pressure that the grandma was putting on everyone to yeah, I so I think it was so the way she kept saying everything has to be perfect. She kept saying everything has to be perfect. Tonight has to be perfect. Yeah, right? she was gonna make the flower sister marry that man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that she didn't want to marry. Also, you have that run when she oh, t- yeah, tells and her, why? Because she needed because it was supposed to be really good for the town. Like it would be good for the family. And even when they have that, when the grandmother does a flashback, you see even more extended. As she walks past all the kids and all of them are kind of like, you know, kind of frazzled and they stiffen up as she walks by. It just feels like that. You know what it is? It feels like that funk, fake in the funk. It's like just because on the outside, the family looks like really beautiful. There are so many cracks on the inside. Yeah. And that's the thing that like they have been right. covering up the grandmother, Bruno. That they're all just holding yeah. it together and none of them are really happy. The cloud sister is always having a hard, the, the cloud aunt. She's not okay freely not okay <laughs> there's also the reputation of of the magic in the town right so like a lot of that stuff is like they they, they don't just have to uh, pro, you know projected for abuela they also have to abuela's like the town needs to know that the magic is 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 fine you know for me probably what was missing and i think maybe they try to do it a little bit but they didn't want it to be heavy-handed was the fact that there was this like you know, unnamed force of people who killed her husband and that force is still a threat, yeah. you know? And, like, the town is still under threat and they're still under threat in some way because she was all, always talking about losing, afraid of losing the magic, but it was like, why? If you lose the magic, what yeah. happens? You know what I mean? And we never, we never really got to that point. And... There was a part of me when the mountain split open, I thought we were going to see, and maybe they even thought about this storyboarding it, and then they were like, this is too complicated for us to, to like explain who these people are. So like, let's not even bring it in. 
and like just keep it in the family, which I think I I understand why, but it did make like there was a part of it that was like I don't I didn't know what the what the thing was that she was so concerned about, you know, and I still kind of don't. <laughs> I'm just but now I'm mentally filling it in as like it had to be that I understand the idea that like because my husband di- and like and I and I agree I think at least you were saying this a generation that went through something horrific is going to kind of pass that on to their children like whether they mean to or not and it's be- it's like you got to live this way because this is how I had to live to survive you know and it's like well actually you know you want to survive and then have your <laughs> you know your children and their children live better lives and not necessarily have to live the way that you lived you know and I think yeah like in the i'll relate it to black like the black community i think i mean i think this is true maybe of the latinx community too of like uh you know corporal punishment or like you know the spanking your children right it's like we had to do it's like we have to toughen up and make the world like the world is this way and so you gotta do this to make sure that your children aren't gonna face that and like now we're getting into this place was like actually maybe that's not the best way to do it and just because it happened to me and it happened to my father and their father doesn't mean it necessarily has to keep going and i feel like it was kind of more an ambiguous thing maybe that's why they didn't fill it because they wanted it to be like it could be anything but it also made it it was slightly confusing for me but i'm getting i I think i understand more now great i mean to me you know the only thing like the most important part of this movie is that we got to see a family and they got to be lad next the whole movie you know mm-hmm. what i mean like ain't they, did nobody get turned in <laughs> what then no, no listen hit me out man no one got turned into no random creatures and had to sing a song all right the family with a family did you see the preview did someone turn for, into a creature yeah there was a preview for a disney movie called like red panda or something and it's like a Lord it's like mercy. an asian girl and then she turns into Ooh, a bye. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. I, I, did you not see that no, trailer? I didn't. No, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure yeah. red pandas mean something historically or, 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 or culturally, but it's just like there is something. Uh, it's called the movie's called Turning Red. The movie's called Turning Red. It's a uh, Pixar film. It's going to be the one of the new okay, Pixar. Okay, Pixar. Yo, why, why, why can't P- there's a part of me that thinks Pixar did this because they were like. Even though this movie was obviously well underway before Soul <laughs> came out, I, I still kind of think they were like, hey, we like turning people into things. And no. you think it's racist, but it's not because we did it to a black person and we're doing it to an Asian person. Do it to a white person. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Brave. Well, L- Luca was a merman, kind of, so... Man, I ain't see Luca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that I told you I didn't see it. <laughs> I watched Luca. Luca was not a merman the whole movie. Okay, listen, he was. Matter of fact, Luca was a mermaid who got turned into a man. Hey, Soul, he wasn't a he wasn't a cat the whole movie. He, the white lady was the cat. I mean, him? No, <laughs> no. No, no, I'm not focusing on the movies. Don't ruin this he movie. He wasn't right? a cat the whole movie. Because the white lady was him. <laughs> he was a blue dot. I know. Or he was... No. <laughs> this movie, okay, is beautiful because we get to see a family of color. And all I'm saying is, in animation, it would be great to see more people of color get to be people of color the whole movie. Okay? I don't care what... I, re- I, tr- I truly do not care what, what myth... What what historical story? What everything you've? I don't care what you've heard about because we haven't had enough people of color look like people of color from beginning to end. Like James just said, if you take a white boy named Chadwick or Chauncey and turn his ass into an eagle or a snail for a whole goddamn movie, then I'm gonna be like, okay, we getting somewhere. But that's not fucking diversity in animation if we don't look like how we look in the animation. There's the what's that movie where the kid turns into a a mouse or Chanticleer? You remember you know what I'm talking about? This is an old movie. That's not a Disney movie though. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I feel I don't even feel comfortable saying that title. Like I genuinely don't feel cool saying that. Let <laughs> me just say, <laughs> turning. Red. I loved when they gave her the freaking doorknob. They made a doorknob. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. They made her own room. Come in the magic house. The doorknob was like it was like her. She had to open the door to the to the whole house, and right? Then the Wasn't door not, she... Yeah, and then the you know everybody got their powers back. 
I just feel like what yeah. I would have liked to have happened at the end is is for I would I know that this isn't the message of the movie, but I would have loved for her to have gotten some power. You know? I know, I, I know. Like, That's how I yeah, felt too. And it's like I know you're not supposed yeah. to want her to get powers. But I know. It's like, we come all on, give her some fucking power. Yeah. We were all waiting <laughs> for it because we were like, well, because I guess the other thing is like, why couldn't why couldn't she? be special like not have what i don't know i was just like maybe her power was empathy the whole time but like just name it i don't know right yeah that is what i wanted or for them to be like there has to be a matriarch who doesn't have powers just like the abuela or whatever like you're in charge of the family because you don't have powers or like something just make her the sucky make her the sucky planeteer whose power just was heart you know what no, I mean? Heart. Like, what did he ever do? <laughs> like, he had heart. Heart could, could shoot never win hearts no fights. at people, though, and yeah. that affected them. You could get past guards and stuff if you g- shot him with heart. D- did he ever yes, do that? Yes, he did. That was the one thing he did. He <laughs> if, definitely if, took his thing and went heart, and then, like, would like shoot the person with Wait, like, he could oh. also talk to animals, couldn't he? Yeah, if you were attacked he by had an a animal, you could, heart, you could heart the no. animal. He only he only had that little pet monkey. But you could heart the if you were being attacked by like a lion, you could heart the lion, and the lion would be like, ah, oh, I'm a chill. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. No, he had the best power actually. Power anyway, heart. go ahead, James. Sorry, I think you were building. Was something. I building something? Well, I'm just saying because they made her. You know, they made that uh, doorknob for her, and I just feel like they could have given her a power too. Like you know, you know, like she's there. You know. And she's like interested in the doorknob, and she's like, "How did y'all mm-hmm. make this?" And then we like pan mm-hmm. over, and and we see, we just hear, "Hey, I, I, I could have, I helped it, I made it." <laughs> How did you make this doorknob? <laughs> <laughs> Steel, Steel's like, "It was me. I, I, I made it." You want, you want to know how to weld things, and then. <laughs> And then Steel hands her the hammer and she's like, I feel the power. And she like, and then she starts welding stuff. <laughs> Yo, it's so yeah. ridiculous. You forced that one. That's actually really funny. That was a force. Steel was there and he helps. <laughs> that was funny. I think it was like, he helped build the house. Like he was actually no, one, he like, built the hammer. We saw everybody build the house. We don't know where that doorknob came from that doorknob came out of nowhere and that was we engraved see- that had an yeah, M engraved. engraved into it it was like there was some mastery going on there yeah oh my goodness Bray end it That's end fun. it alright well we rate review films not based on how much we liked it but whether or not it helped the cause of more leading actors of color so if this film fully helped the cause uh, we give it a black fist if it's someone helped the cause we give it a white palm if it doesn't help the cause we don't give it anything so on the count of three, we'll rate, we'll, uh, you know, show our uh, rating for Encanto. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> what are you doing, you Gerard? Did, you did rock and paper. Hear me out, okay? Gerard Milligan. Okay, everybody gave... A black fist, but then Gerard gave a black fist and a white palm, which is illegal. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> hear me out, okay? Hear me out. I'm just think. I'm, I'm just saying it deserves a black fist because it's a Latinx family and it's really dope. But what makes me sad to give it a white palm is that it is a Disney movie, okay? A Disney musical, and I didn't like any songs. That's not a reason to give it a. That, wait, we literally said you don't <laughs> review based on how much you like. Hear me it. out. Hear me out. Because I, I, I do no. think when you watch when you watch these Disney movies, you want the kids going home singing some songs, and when they get sing along DVDs, they're gonna be like, "Oh my goodness, this song is like I don't know what they can learn about history or something through this music." And I don't we think the don't music talk did that. About Bruno. No, 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 no. We, we don't, don't talk, talk about, about Bruno. Bruno. No, no. No, y'all don't know. I'm just saying it, okay? I'm torn. So I don't know. You guys go, <laughs> yes. maybe I might pick one, but I don't know. Familia I don't know. I don't know. Yes. I like that friend. The Familia Madre okay. girl. That was it, right? Okay. Got the note. <laughs> yes. I did like that one. Wait, was that the first yeah, one? Yeah, they like, yeah. reprised yeah. that one a couple times. Yeah. I do like that. that I fire. do. I did like the first song, even though I don't remember. I, I, I mean, I remember them talk, her talking about the different powers and stuff. I did like that opening song. I thought that was nice. All right. Well, Elise, thank you so much yes. for joining this podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. And Kanto to be here. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where <laughs> where can worst. people uh, find you? Is there anything you'd like to plug? Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Pandalise, not a red panda, just a regular panda. That's P A N D A L I S E. I'm Elise Navidad on Twitter. Uh, oh, I like that. I know. And I, I really, it's at this point, it's just, I can't change the fact that I don't have the same on either. But um, a lot of people actually think my real name is Elise Navidad and um, have brought me up on stage and said, up next is Elise Navidad, and I have to be like, no, that's just my handle. Wow. <laughs> um, and I also have a podcast called The Roast of Your Teenage Self, which is on the All Things Comedy Network, and it's really fun. Oh, I listened. I well, there you go. Was, that is terrifying, because teenage self, ooh, man, that was an yeah. awkward boy. That was yeah, awkward. it's a tough time Mm-mm. for us all. <laughs> oh, man. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can follow us at Blackman Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Blackmanpodcast.com is our website. Uh, we can find links to we have merchandise, like t-shirts and things. We have a defunct Patreon. We don't do new episodes on there anymore. But there's a year's worth of episodes. So if you want to subscribe to that for a little bit to listen to those, great. Uh, also, if you rate and review us on iTunes and give us five stars, we'll read your review on the air. This is by PLLP Leroy Jenkins. Uh, it says, what up? I stumbled on the podcast when I was at work looking for movie podcasts, and this is a great representation of black art. Now, a movie that always kind of confused me was Fat Albert. Kyla Pratt's character was a depressed teenager while her sister, Lori, was having the time of her life. Then when Kyla cries Fat Albert and the gang jump out of the TV and try to help her, how would these fictional characters help a human being who probably suffers from depression disorder with singing and dancing? LOL. I would like to hear you guys review this movie and talk about it if it was a good idea to have an overweight superhero who didn't even try to lose weight after decades of being around. Wow, there's so much here. But this is the movie did not have an all black cast. And most of the actors in this film are still acting in TV shows and movies. So maybe this film helped the cause question mark. My my. Um, <laughs> His name is Leroy Jenkins. Is is Bill Cosby in Fat Albert or he is in Fat Albert. He is. Okay, well. All right. Anyway. <laughs> I still Thank haven't seen that movie. <laughs> I still haven't seen that movie. I I didn't see it either. I've never seen that movie. Uh, one day we'll review it, I guess. I emailed a bunch of people trying to get in that movie at the time. I got a letter back from Bill Cosby's assistant. It is one of the few films Keenan Thompson oh, Keenan's starred in it? is the, the lead Isn't of. Isn't that the if, only if movie he's, he's the lead of? <laughs> next to Good Burger? He was one of the mains in Mystery Men. No, that's no, Kel. That's Kel. No, that's Kel. And even Kel was supporting. Oh, Keenan. Sorry, and Kel <laughs> was way supporting. Keenan was... The other movie... <laughs> the other movie Keenan was in was Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> he's right, but he pilots. was supporting, right? That's ensemble. 100% supporting. 100% supporting. He's uh, fat Albert. He's not the even titular like character. Yeah. He's fat Albert. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. thank you again, Elise. Uh, thank you for Elise, listening. Thank you so much. We will see you next week, maybe. I don't know when this comes out. Peace. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs> Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Produced by Melissa D. Fonts. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. To listen to this podcast ad-free, sign up for Forever Dog Plus at foreverdogpodcast.com slash plus. Check out video clips of our podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash foreverdogteam. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at foreverdogteam to keep up with all the latest Forever Dog news. Yeah.